Ryan. Yo, can you hear me? I can hear you, and we are live. Can you hear me? I definitely can hear you. How we doing? We're doing good, man. So uh, I don't know if you have this game pulled up yet, but... Uh, I do not. I do not. I'm opening my vassal right now. Sweet. So they're just... They're just uh, they, they pulled out their rocks and stuff, and they were nice enough to give me their list beforehand, so we got the uh, squad overlay on the stream, and we're, we're nice. ready to go. All right, what room am I, lo am I looking at? Are uh, you looking for C... CRCL versus slow dive. I think it starts, they said, like deep core and then that. Let's see. Deep core. Got it. All right. Are you, are you in? I I am in I think. <laughs> it's Gold Squadron podcast map. Oh, maybe that's why I didn't download the map pack. Uh -huh. probably... Ah. Do you at least have a board? Like Oh, it... I I can see. I'm good. Uh, all right. So, that's what matters. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I got enough to uh commentate on this. Sweet man. So, uh let's let's break down some li well, you know first Ryan, how are you doing, man? I am doing just just great. Um, you know, it's uh, you got the uh, other world championships happening. We got friends over there, and that's been really nice. Um, and you know, but I'm I'm really excited to see um this triple skurg list. Yeah, I mean, we have a triple crack shot, twin laser turret, intel agent, long range scanners. Like that's that's awesome. I mean, there's... You know, it, it's interesting not seeing any ordnance on these guys, and I'm really interested to see how this, um, the advantages of having this over just four quad TLT, um, just does is losing. Are you going to get that much more survivability and that much more offense out of the the revenants as you would, you know, a Y wing with the crack shot and the long range scanners? So it's going to be really interesting for sure. Yeah, so basically what you're, what you're trading, you're trading, um, you know, a, another ship, right? A ship yeah. for a crack shot and, arg I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call it a better dial, but a different dial? Yeah, definitely different. Definitely different. Like, you you got a little more speed um, with these, um, with these Skurgs, right? And they, I think... The um the ability to barrel roll is also incredibly important. That action for that maneuverability means that they can long range scanners right at the start, get their target lock, and that means they still can get mods in case they have to barrel roll to control range. Absolutely. And then so that's slow dives list, and then on the other side, C R C L is playing a you know, a squad that I was really surprised to see. When I was, when I opened up his list, I was like, wait a second, what what is this? The Inquisitor and five Tie Fighters? You know, we've had a really interesting conversation locally about um, swarms in general, and also Reddit kind of touched on it as well. When you were talking about swarms, I think obviously the traditional, you know, Hal Runner swarm could be dead. Dallas is really down on it, but I think there's still a lot of room for a bunch of ships. Um, you know, the swarm without Hal Runner because. You've got harpoons and you've got you know bombs and whatnot, but you still have the ability to spread these guys out. Maybe full-on formation flying isn't something you're going to see as much of anymore, but you could see a group of three, uh, two groups of three. You could see two, two, and two. Uh, the Inquisitor is an amazing endgame ace that you can just kind of protect, uh, keep his investment going for that entire game. And I like the squad. I really do. I think there is a there is a vacuum in X Wing right now for Ace plus Mini Swarm. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see how how this works out because the uh, one advantage that the Swarm player does have, uh, besides having more guns and being able to shoot at a one agility ship, is the fact that he does have two of them at PS one, so he's gonna be able to leverage them as blockers. Correct. So that Intel agent on the Scourge is, might not be as powerful. Um, at least against the the Tie Fighters, um, and I'm interested to see how he you know how he puts that together. 
Yeah, well, I didn't mention the uh, Intel on the Skurg, which is also just like a great buy. It's just really, really good value overall. That one point to be able to see, you know, to see where the ship's going. But it will, like you said, it will be weakened by the fact that he has so many ships in play. Um, it, let me ask you something, Dion. If if we're if I'm slow dive, who's my primary target here? Do I do you start chipping these um, these uh, Tie Fighters down, or instead, do you get all guns on the Inquisitor as early as possible? So I would expect the Inquisitor to be so man. I would expect the Inquisitor to possibly be a little bit cagey, and if he's if he is cagey with the Inquisitor, that's his opportunity to take out some of these Tie Fighters with that TLT. Just get a couple of them off the board because as soon as they you know they they only have three hit points. As soon as you start chipping away. Uh, if you got, you know, two Skurgs versus the Inquisitor at the end game, you might be able to make that work by blocking him with one of the Skurgs and trying to get range one shots with the primary, um, with the other. Yeah. And I'm, I'm with you there a little bit, Dion, like pilot skills really, you know, sometimes we see in these lesser matchup, these lower pilot skill matchups, which we haven't seen as much lately that, um, pilot skills less relevant, but the fact that we've got these black squadrons at four and these lo- uh, low lock revenants at four three you know you have potential with these black squadrons to at some point in the game ps kill yep for sure so just looking here at the vassal chat looks like uh one of the players uh computer crashed so we're just gonna (laughs) we're gonna fill a little bit of dead air while they uh while they get ready to to get going well um let's talk about this uh asteroid placement right here um do we know which side of the board each one is going to be on quite yet uh yes Um, so the Inquisitor plus Mini Squirm is going to be on the left, and the Scourge okay. will be on the right. So I think, obviously, it is problematic for this Tie Swarm to be to have this many rocks on the board. So if I'm slow dive, you for sure want to keep your TLTs in inside those asteroid formations with your barrel rolls, with your ability. You want to circle away. You don't want to give this TIE Swarm space. You don't want to allow them to remain in formation. And any big, any really good Swarm player, you watch Dallas play, they'll have contingencies for rocks. But that TIE Swarm player could very well start off on that uh, bottom left side of that board and try to keep in space. And he'll, you know, it'll be, we'll see a few turns of jogging for position here because the, the suspended terrain that we have with the uh, asteroids is going to provide a lot of tactical decisions for both uh, pilots. Absolutely, and for those of you who are watching, this is a deep core game, so this is the the best of the best on Vassal right now. So I'm really interested to see how these guys put it together. Because sometimes, you know, you see some a random person out in in the wild put a tie swarm down, and you could say like, oh, this guy, you know, he's just messing around, he's just playing. I I expect to please see some pretty good ace play here and some good swarm play. And you know, you know, flying in Vassal is never easy. It's obviously a different kind of game on Vassal than when you are on tabletop. That being said, you can't argue about the precision of Vassal, and that's sometimes why you see more tie swarms there than in in person. You a little a slight bump to a tie swarm in person can mean that your your entire formation gets all messed up, and it can be a major you know, time issue, making sure that you're carefully moving each one. But on Vassal, as long as you get your initial measurements correctly, you're 100% certain that certain moves will clear. Those two banks will clear. Your uh, pinwheel will stay correct for the entire thing. And that's something to not overlook as we continue and as you watch Vassal games um, is is that precision that you get. But that also means that your ability to have a proper setup is that much more important. Absolutely. Oops, I just scooted the thing on the stream. There we go. I should probably lock that down. Dion, I am loving this overlay that you got going on. I got both open, uh, the Twitch overlay and the standard. And I lo- looking. I like these silhouettes on the bottom here, and that is a gorgeous mat. It is, you're, just, you're just killing it. Look at this thing. Try, trying, man. Trying. Fr- Friday Night X-Wing, baby. That's right. Live, live from Chicago and California all at the That's same right. time. That's right. That's <laughs> right. You know, I, I'm drink, I I've talked, drinking a cappuccino right now. There you go. I I have water because I'm trying to get less fat. But <laughs> the 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 uh, the summer was very strange. Usually I lose weight in the summer, but it was uh, opposite. I gained quite a bit of weight in the summer. Oh man, I you know the the unfortunate aspect of ha- of working both uh, a day job and then freelance in your free time means that your gym time gets cut 
it down a whole lot. So I've put on put on more weight than I probably should. But I got a I've got a Dallas Parker wedding that I need to lose lose weight for. There you go, motivation, buddy. That's right. That is right. <laughs> um, let's. I want to talk about the decision here to go with two academies. Um, Obviously, we haven't seen academies really play a major role in the game for quite some time. Uh, it's been black squadrons all the way. And we've seen a tendency in X-Wing right now to move more towards, you know, fatter ships, ships with more upgrade slots, instead of filling them out with, you know, a couple fillers. We don't see Z95s that much anymore. We're not seeing you know, either scum or rebels, and we're not seeing the academies as much. However, you know, these academies will be at pilot skill one will make fantastic blockers against these these revenants. And if they can really get in there and hurt their ability to get those barrel rolls, then you could see this these tie swarms take advantage of these range one bubbles. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, looking at the little bit of the Vassal meta, we're actually seeing a little bit of a decline in pilot skill because of uh, one squad that's running around is the uh, the Magic Carpet, right, for Oh, baby, four yeah, Wookies. that's right. I mean, and those are all PS1s, so, you know, if you're trying to... The only way to get them to stop doing the Reinforce... This just sounds kind of to ridiculous. Right, exactly, it's to block them. So I'm curious... And the only way to do that is to make sure that you have a PS1 as well. Yep. So, you know... It, I've always, it's always been an interesting discussion and kind of back and forth with what's more important, like the pilot skill wise. And there's a lot of value inherent in PS1s knowing that you'll go first. I really think that one of the best ships in the game right now is that PS1 Delta Defender. It makes a great Imperial filler. And you, since you're moving first, you, that X7, as long as you don't mess up and go over a rocker, you're not getting blocked because you're going first. So that X7 procs fairly often. And that's a really tanky, frustrating end game. And I'd like to see more Imperial squads incorporating it like one Delta. And I see, like you said right here, those academies, that's necessary for those that four, that four uh, Magic Carpet Ride squad, which I think will definitely be a player once we get into regional season. You will see four Wookiees on the table at a store near you, and you got to be ready for it. Absolutely. So we're, we're taking a look here. Um, CRCL. He's uh looks like his vassal name is Discordia, so he he doesn't know who he wants to be, but <laughs> um, he's starting to set up here in his uh, his left side of the table um, by the rocks. It's an interesting choice, but maybe the decision here is you know maybe the Skurgs would have wanted to be there to use the rock cover like you were talking about Ryan, and maybe now he's saying hey sure you can go there, but I'm gonna joust you, and if you exactly. come into this area, I'm gonna take you out. It's a really good really good thought there, Dion, because. Let's say the Skurgs line up directly across from him, right? Now he's now the Skurgs are jousting the swarm, which is no, no, what nobody ever wants to do l at all. But if they set up in that open space, uh, CRCL has plenty of room to just hard one turn and then move into that open space. So, you know, that's actually a fairly smart idea to move up there near those rocks because he's controlling that, that engagement point. He can go into that full joust or just bide his time and circle around the rocks on the outside. So really, Slow Dive has to decide, am I going to joust, or am I going to move into the open space and get into another joust, or am I going to set up and move into the rocks? Absolutely. So looks like Slow Dive is setting up his Skurgs in a, uh, a, a pseudo pinwheel with uh, only three parts there. And uh, Man, the pinwheel, it's really a, it's really a shame that... Um, that some of the art of formation flying has kind of died off. It, it, you know, we see it with like Ego Mark III and Fairship Rebel, Rebel and everything. But man, a well-run pinwheel formation is such a hard thing, but a beautiful thing to see executed correctly. You can go back and read those articles about how to correctly do it. And you had swarm players that didn't even bother because of how difficult it was. I know Dallas can do it, but he says sometimes it's not even worth it. But when it's executed properly, man. Sometimes there's no better flying in X-Wing than seeing that pinwheel executed well. Absolutely. So looking at uh, – so all his TIE Fighters are marked here. Looking at the red TIE Fighter in the top yeah. left corner, he's definitely behind that rock. So are we expecting maybe that one TIE Fighter to, to peel off? I mean, he has a couple decisions. He can just turn them all to the right so he can come down yeah. into the open space. 
Right. So a couple of things that he could do. Yeah, he could turn them all to the right, uh, one hard, and then move towards that open space. Um, he could uh, fairly easily do um, five forwards with um, the three on the upper side of your screen and then do uh, two left bank barrel rolls with uh, teal and red. And then next turn, you can kind of readjust. You know, you can do one hards with the other swarm. And then do... it's it's. I wish I had more experience watching tie swarms. I know we have Dallas out here who flies them really often. And I'll keep name dropping him as we go because he's the only kind of experience I have That's watching right. these. No, no it's, shame. Really, it's really easy to, you know think that uh it's really easy to get them back in formation if you know what your opening is it's this is practiced and i'm sure that crcl wouldn't do he's not going through that rock he, he knows what he's doing yeah for sure and i for slow dive those skurgs i think the middle setup was the correct decision because now the academy really has to decide they have to commit turn one tie swarm's got to commit and he's going straight so he's, he's uh, what was that? Was that a forward? Forward three. three. Forward three, yep. And now we wait for the Skurgs. I probably, what do you think? Maybe if it's just like a forward one, just kind of bide your time, barrel roll backwards, something like that? Yep, there's yeah, the one. Yeah, I think you can afford to do, yeah, forward ones with them. Ah, they have a long range scanner. So they're just going to, they're going to yes. target lock that Inquisitor, keep him cagey. Yeah, and we didn't even mention the Inquisitor down there at the bottom left just hiding out in that uh, Gold Squadron logo. <laughs> yep. um, if I were the Skurgs, I would be going all in on Inquisitor turn one. Uh, I, you cannot allow that Inquisitor to be an endgame to these TLTs. He'll eat you alive. you got to get him out off as early as possible. Three TLTs is enough to overwhelm his defenses, especially with Crackshot, especially with Crackshot. Yep, and then the... Uh... The academies take their uh, no, those aren't academies. Those are blacks. The black squadrons take a right turn behind that asteroid. Smart. So he split split up his swarm here, but he definitely has plenty of space to come through that gap in the rocks there if he wants to. Yeah, he won't. It's doubtful that they will come back into you know major formation again, but it's not impossible for them to. Um, get all their arcs on one target i can you you can probably expect a, a two or three turn from the uh alpha grouping up top and then um bravo you know teal and red looks like they're gonna come and maybe try and get in front of the inquisitor so i'm, I'm interested to see how slow dive responds here because mm -hmm. he's got a couple he's got some tough choices if he goes after the inquisitor right now full head on He's going to be getting hit on his flank by a brunt of TIE fighters. Yeah, it's going to hurt. <laughs> That's going to hurt for sure. I'm really curious to see uh, the impact that Intel is going to have in this game. Well, um, those TIE fighters are coming through here, so he'll be able to do something with that information and with the Inquisitor. So I right. think that's that's where the money is. If he can if he can leverage it and make sure he can get some good range one and range two shots on the Inquisitor, that's gonna that's gonna be the money. And unlike the Y Wings, that range one shot from the um or in arc shot with the the Skurgs is nothing to scoff at. It's really nothing that you can kind of kind of poo poo as you know, range three or range two from a Y Wing, the Inquisitor isn't scared of. Three range two shots from three Skurgs, the Inquisitor maybe is a little concerned. I ran out of tokens. <laughs> uh, for those people at home, let us know how the audio balance is. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, you just, oh man, you sound crystal clear, man. Good, good. Ready I'm to. Where you start singing some Aladdin. <laughs> oh, we're supposed <laughs> to do a, a duet. Uh, I don't think we're supposed to do anything. I think we are going to do it. I think that's going to uh, be, we're going to make you and me, Ryan, it's going to be a feature at the podcast party at Worlds, okay? Oh, uh, all right, all right. Well, I just want you to know I'm tone deaf. I'm not rhythm deaf, but I'm tone deaf. My roommate is a musician and does audio design stuff, and he's tried to teach me how to sing on pitch, and I just don't get it. I just can't. I can't tell the difference between a C on the middle of the piano and a C on the other side of the piano. Like, they sound totally different to me. He's like, can't you tell that that's a C? And I'm like, 
no i cannot so <laughs> we'll see I'll, I'll try i'll get i'll give it the old college try that's right that's right <laughs> got some two banks from these academies here um let's see that's pink and white doing that might see a it's, it's maybe a barrel roll from white to get behind pink they also have the space to do one no, they're barrel rolling away or at least the white one is Uh, Balan Mood says, no more farmer singing in all caps. So that means they want you to sing. I think that's what that means. Listen, Balan, Balan, or Belinda, Belinda Mood. Belinda I Mood, am, sorry. I am with you. I do not <laughs> wish, to, I don't want to sing. But if, if if the people want it, you know, if I, I'm getting all these messages, I'm wondering, who am I to say no? It's <laughs> what the people want. But I will not do it right now. That's for sure. Maybe I'll save it for Worlds. Ah, perfect. Yeah, you can just mute me. Good to go. <laughs> there you go. I have mute. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So Slow Dive decides to take his Skurgs up to the right towards this yeah, split off Tie Swarm. He definitely doesn't want to get into that trap of hitting the Inquisitor wide and then getting flanked by that Tie Swarm. So I, I think this is smart because now that. CRCL's TIE Swarm isn't positioned for a hard joust. He doesn't have all five guns in formation. This allows Slow Dive to move up and maybe start slowly picking off some of these uh, academies and these other fighters while taking minimal damage okay. because he doesn't have to worry about the brunt of five guns all coming at him at once. Absolutely, yeah. He definitely should be able to get all three, uh, three TLTs on at least one of the TIE Fighters here. If uh, CRCL tries to engage him with uh, this, uh, you would call it alpha group here on the top. Yeah, and uh, Drazar um, from the Twitch chat has a really good point. He's forcing the ties to play in the rocks, which gives them a huge, a huge advantage. And there's no doubt, once a tie swarm's been split by you know five rocks or debris and everything, really hurts their firepower. Especially because you know usually it's because they lose that Hellrunner bonus, but Hellrunner's not even in this squad. So it'll be interesting to see how CRCL brings his swarm back around and if he can get all these guns back on these Skurgs. Um, my question for you, Dion, is do you think the Inquisitor should maybe now begin moving in for a hard flank on these guys? I mean, yeah. The the Skurgs are not in a really a great position to be able to turn back at him, so I would come in quick for sure. Because you, what you don't want is you don't want two TIE Fighters to die by the time the Inquisitor gets there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it looks like the Inquisitor is in good position to kind of throw up and get in there. And that the Inquisitor can really pick these guys off fast. Three dice versus only one agility. He can just hang out at range three and maybe only get in one of their TLT zones and just start picking. Yep, that's the way to do it for sure. Hmm. I'm interested to see... Uh, um, that we should get combat next round. If um, if I'm not mistaken, it'd be I'd be surprised if we didn't. Where do you think that alpha group, uh, you white, yellow, and pink, is going to head next turn? Well, hmm. looking at the board state right here, most likely, I think it would be a mistake to to take those tie fighters at the Skurgs. He might turn away and barrel roll backwards in order to give himself a little bit more time to get the Inquisitor in position. The problem with that, though, is then he's facing TIE Fighters away and they won't have space to K-turn. So it's a little bit of a... I, I don't love his positioning right now, to be completely honest. Yeah, he's in. he's definitely in a rough spot, without a doubt. I think if he turns Alpha Group away and Barrel Rolls back out... Um, that hurts. It hurts deciding to retreat. And you don't want to you know lose that board position but if he does that these tie fighters are fast enough that they could sneak away regroup in the open space come back around uh you know in vassal we don't have time limits you've got that what 20 round turn limit or 17 uh, round turn nine, limit 19 is what they have 19 right so he's got plenty of time to make it you know to play his game there's no reason to rush into that engagement with the skurgs especially because they're still tightly knit together they've got a nice small um, kind of zone in front of them and their bubbles 
you like that TLT, it's almost they're all overlapping is what I'm trying to say for the most part. So if you're in one, you're probably going to be in all three. Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, against one tie, that's probably a dead tie fighter. Yeah, so let's, man, it's a chat here saying three talent roll from the Skurgs might fit. It might. I don't know if he has to do that, though. Man, I just think you I I think you just go one forward with your Skurgs. One or two forward, take it nice and easy. See what that tie swarm is doing. Again, like the one of the great things about Vassal League is there isn't that clock time limit. So you always know how much time you have left without a doubt. The games can run a little longer time-wise, but that I mean that allows slow dive to slow play this up and just play his game. It both both players want to get into this first engagement on their own terms. And it does seem, like you said, Dion, that CRCL is early right now at a bit of a disadvantage. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Twitch comment here. Cosmic Jello says, so weird to hear an uninterrupted farmer. Oh, man, it is. It is strange. <laughs> well, it's because, you know, I'm not saying anything dumb. It must be. <laughs> I mean, I haven't I, had anyone. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, this, I'll let you say what you want, man. I won't. I oh, won't, I won't yell at you. Oh, Matt, you know what? I'm, you, you can just. Re, you're the correct D. You're the D I like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So while we wait for these guys, uh, no dragons in this recording. No, because he was at. He's going to the movies. He's gonna go see. Yeah. Uh, Thor, right? Ragnarok. That's right. D's at Ragnarok right now. I should call him and then see if his phone's on. <laughs> Forgot to turn it. <laughs> you ruined the movie in the most important part. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> He'd be so angry at me. I'm not going to do that. Alrighty. So here here come the ties. So he's got a three bank from the white tie, one hard. I mean, he looks like he's trying to spread his arcs out and hopefully get some shots here. Um, I think that one forward you were saying, Ryan, would be the best choice. He went a little bit faster with the two forward. One or two is totally fine. Like that's, I, I think. Uh, I think that that allows him to still keep control of his positioning. Um, what do we got here? A left bank from mm -hmm. one of the Skurgs. From the one at the top, just getting getting around that corner there. Really good flying by slow dive here. Yeah, I, I I think one of these TIE Fighters are going to be dying this turn, for sure. And the unfortunate thing is he's not going to have a ton of arcs on these scurries. He's going to be trading a TIE for, you know, maybe, if he's lucky, three damage on one of these Skurgs. Yep, I mean, the the TIE Fighter right now is really strung out. It's basically a, more of a column than a, a block formation. I will say this, though. After this turn... Dion, the ties are in fairly good position to start playing their game. The academies are in a, like he's got yellow in a solid spot to mess up and bump into this formation. He's got the Inquisitor coming in on their flank. So if he can maybe get some dice on his side and survive without losing a tie this turn, then you know that he CRCL's in position to do a lot of damage next turn. Now, the question here is what's going to be his target right now? Does he take out the white TIE fighter that can possibly block him? Do you, do you take that one out, or do you try to take out one of the crack shot uh, black I say I say a PS kill uh, in Academy, simply for the reason that they're going to be the guys coming in and blocking you. Yeah, for sure. That, like, that's my thought, like, too. Like, sure, you're going to take some damage from the crack shots, but you're going to, well, if you take an Academy, one, you know it's not going to block you next turn. And two, it's not gonna fire at you. It's not gonna do any damage. Um, so yeah, I think I think you gotta take out white. Yep. In my opinion, it's right there. And additionally, white should be in all three of those TLT unobstructed. I think yellow could potentially be an obstruction from uh, num uh, Revenant number two, but again, I'm not 100% sure. It's hard to tell on Vassal. I don't play Vassal. I, r I very rarely do. So. Uh, apologies if some of my uh, eyeballing is incorrect. No worries, no worries. We got a couple of different opinions in the chat. Some people think they should take out pink. Other people think they should take out white. Somebody's... Pink? What are you doing? That, what? Pink? Come on. 
Come on. I, 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 I don't think you would be able to kill Pink. Pink's not even firing you this turn. I do admit it's in position to block you next turn, but it, yeah, without a doubt. Sure. But White has many more ways to block you than Pink does. Um, All right, we're waiting for he says your shots and and we're right, waiting. Let's... I don't think that Inqui I'd like to see that range on Inquisitor. Uh, looks like. Just looking at the the vassal chat that he said, uh, your shots said nope. It looks like we're we're waiting on something. Hopefully we didn't get another another. I, I think I think slow dive is thinking CRCL should check range with Inquisitor. I think that's what he's saying first. I will check ranges at least with Inquisitor and his PS4s. Yep. Actually, no. Looking at the. Uh, Looking at the oh, his PC crashed again. Yeah, his... slow dies. We're just gonna wait, wait it out real fast. He's switching computers. Good. <laughs> no worry. We're 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 good at filling time. It's not like we you know talk for several hours a week every week and. Oh God, we, we actually the reason I was able to come on tonight is we're we're not recording on our usual Friday. Usually, my knock podcast records on Fridays, but we're doing Monday. Because uh, we're trying to adhere to Dallas's super hectic schedule at the moment. Yeah, for sure. And that that's why I wasn't sure when I reached out to you. I was like, hopefully, maybe they'll be available. Mm -hmm. it, it it doesn't hurt if you don't try, right? Well, I'm glad you asked because commentating X Wing is one of my favorite things. Like, I if I could have a job like commentating X Wing, I would do it way more often. Like, it's I actually fun fact. I actually when I was in high school, my dream was to be an ESPN commentator. And when I went to college, I went to college for broadcasting and used to commentate like hockey games and stuff. So, you know, I eventually moved to filmmaking and editing. But this is kind of scratching an itch of mine to <laughs> li live talk about high stakes sports. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I know one of my plans is if we if we ever get the system open schedule. Um, someday my, my, and if there's the one in California that they did last year I want to go and of course I'll, I'll bring all the gear and uh, and do my thing and I'll set up stuff and if you're there you know Yo, man you're I not for playing, sure will we'll, be there we'll get if it. there's one in, yeah and if I you know punk out and lose my first two games I'll just you know pop in that commentator chair with you there you go so we'll get that done <laughs> the chat is asking hey talk about the new crappy scum ship oh one of the <laughs> Oh, the okay. chemo gila. The chemo gila is not crappy. I'm actually concerned, and we're we're recording on Monday talking about it. That bullseye firing arc has potential to be really nasty. And I'll say this straight up, and I'll say it again later on that that bullseye firing arc. Yes, I've been a huge advocate for making arcs important in the game again. Yes, it can make it can has the potential of doing that. I do not like it. I do not I like the concept of the bullseye firing arc. I do not like it paired with <laughs> some of these abilities on the PS7 and PS8 guys. Especially using VI that PS8 guy to PS10 with a repositioning ability with that barrel roll. I'm I'm a little, little man, that PS10, that PS8 guy is really good. For really sure, good. For sure. Now, here here's a couple questions that I just have in the you know about the PSA. And let me here we, we have time. We'll pull up. Let me pull up my uh, browser here. The the ability reads. There it goes. Magic of the internet. Just see whatever they you did want. reveal in the article that all the one hards and two hards are red, which okay. definitely can definitely hinders its ability to maneuver um but i mean we'll see what that what the k-turn is like and everything as well plus we have the new you know the cybernetics so as an illicit slot if you need to pop that and do a red turn and still get your action so you could do a hard turn once and then barrel roll we'll see i i just think man that um i think the ps8 guy is a a real bargain at 28 points or 29 points all right. So he reads, <laughs> after you perform an attack, each 
enemy ship inside your bullseye firing arc at range 1 to 3 must choose to suffer one damage or remove all of its focus and evade tokens. Now, here's my question. It's great. It's what if, great. What if, what if I don't have any focus and evade tokens? Can I discard zero tokens? So, it's really interesting. Right? It's a really interesting decision, and we're... Like, I don't want to, oh man, t- hitting all my talking points for this Monday. Um, <laughs> I mean, my, mine too. <laughs> it's a, yeah, exactly. My thought is, okay, let me, now I need to. <laughs> don't, don't pull, just wing it. Don't pull out your notes. I don't want you to waste your notes. Don't waste. No, 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 no. I'm, you want to pull up the cards? So you can spend, so you're allowed to spend a focus token, I think, and change no results, right? Correct. I think because the way it's it's worded, it says uh, or remove all of your focus and evade tokens. So, like, I feel like it could be bar- It could be argued both ways. You could say, "Look, I'm removing all of my tokens, the zero tokens that I have." It's tough. It's tough, but I really think it's going to get ruled that if you can't do one, you have to do the other. So True. I don't think you'd be able to remove zero tokens. If you don't have a token, you're SOL. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, now here's here's one thing I wonder. Like, let's say they rule it that if you don't have focus evade, you can discard zero tokens. If they rule it that way, the Wookiee gunship is the direct counter to this. You're oh, just, without a doubt. You're just There's like no, I take yeah, expertise I and reinforce every turn, and it's, you yeah, can you're suck toast. It. Yeah. It takes a major. Honestly, it it takes a major major hit if you can discard zero tokens. That's I mean it's it's really dumb. Um, we have a we've got some dis we got a couple disagreements here from the the uh, Twitch chat on how it'll be ruled. Um, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> all the ships disappeared off the board. That's not good. No. <laughs> This is a first. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we saved it. Everything's fine. Uh, and uh, one comparison, like let's say we flip it back the other way, that you can't do, you can't remove zero tokens if you don't have any, and you have to take the damage. So it's, it's a pretty good comparison compared to uh, Old Tarak, but just tankier. The ability to just get rid of people's tokens. Yeah, I'm I'm talking to a couple people right now and they're um they're saying that they don't think you can remove zero tokens. Um Here you talk for a second, Dion. Yeah, I'm no problem. I'm curious about this. So yeah, I mean, it's it's an argument because there's several there's several effects in the game where you can, you know, re-roll zero. You can spend the target lock to re-roll zero dice. I think the the biggest the wording difference is that they say remove, not like force to spend or that the word spend isn't in there. So we'll have to see how FFG parses that out. And of course, we know we won't probably get an FAQ for it for a while. Um, mm-hmm. But we will we will definitely have to see what uh what is ruled because I think. I think it, it's one of those gray areas where you can you can argue both ways, and I'm I'd be curious when uh, when you guys release your episode, I'm going to be curious to see how D ask him for me. Say hey, how do you how do I you will. think this works? And I'll be I'll be waited with with bated breath. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> uh, new squad wise cloaking device. Is there a squad wide? Cloaking device? I don't understand your your comment, Mister T Y A Stig Fifty. Man, I have old man eyes. I can't read that. Ooh, I need a bigger screen. Let's see. Somebody coming here. There, there is a difference between spending slash removing something you have for no effect than spending removing something that you do not have. Very true. That's correct. That's very fair. Yep. It's fair. Which is what one side of the the argument is right so we'll we'll see but i guess if somebody said you know remove your hat it's like but i don't have a hat but remove your hat like i will remove my invisible hat (laughs) 
Does that work? I don't know. So we're waiting on attacks. You want to respawn your list and replace the ships? Looks like he's locked out of something. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. I missed that. Thank you. Thank you, TYA. All right. I'm talking to uh, the Grand Poopa himself, Chris Allen. And according to the FAQ, remove and discard are the same. And according to the FAQ, same, same, they mean the same exact thing. Right. So he's saying that you're discarding all, not your. So technically you are discarding all and all is zero. Boom. So if you don't have any, you can discard zero. Because you're discarding not your focus tokens, which is all of them. But it's still an interesting gray area. Yep. Because, I mean, it's it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely in the gray area where we could see a FAQ say one way or the other. It's a coin flip, for sure. We'll see. I mean, F we'll see how consistent. We could logically do this, and FFG could make an FAQ being like, if they don't have any tokens, then they have to take a damage. Like, we don't know. Right. Which then, if that's the case, then, I mean, because... Depending on how they would rule that. Oh, okay. So oh, we got some action here. For range. Yeah, Inquisitor's checking for range. And looks like he's getting, he's got uh, one and two in his arc. Which is good for him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, Start chipping away at the back guy. You think the back guy? I'm mo he's most likely to be able to keep his arc on him consistently for the next couple turns. Yeah, that's a fair fair point. Fair point. Just thinking what ship next round will get, you know, if he fires that, we got hit hit focus with inquisitor. One evade. One takes evade. So. And who did he shoot? What did he say? Let's see who he takes that off. Is it the bad guy? Yeah. Yeah, back guy. Isn't Far back guy. Number two loses one yep. shield. And the TIE Fighters go ahead and try to do some work here. So they're going uh, at LR3, the center guy. Spends a focus for two. Nice. And he's just going to take it. Probably, probably the right decision to, you know, take the range two instead of a range three on the, the, the first guy you shot at. But, you know, splitting fire in X-Wing can always be a dangerous thing. Absolutely. So he has his, uh, his choices here. Who's he going to shoot? He's starting with the... Um, the back skurg, one farthest away. Decisions, decisions. I mean, whatever he does, I think the choice is to focus fire. All right. He is going at BSP1. So he's going after yellow. Rolls two on the TLT. Clearly, I'm not as uh, intelligent as. Um, <laughs> so he's going after going after yellow, not white. One hit. And we're waiting for those uh, evades. And yellow's already spent his focus, so he's going to be taking another one there. You know, that might be the reason why he went after yellow, because that focus was spent. Yep. Focus spent, and crack shot was not used. Correct. So if he can kill him with taking a crack shot off the board. And the yellow guy's gone. Yep, toast. Taken out. 
off the board, crack shot, and I, never used. And I do think that was the correct decision um, because he, he's squ uh, squishiest target because he spent the focus and you're removing a crack shot from the board. Absolutely. So white will still have some blocking shenanigans uh, in play for you, but oh man, he still has a shot left too. Spoiled for choice here. Savage. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to use that, might be using that primary if it's in range one. It's just going to go primary at range uh, AP2. Oh, man, man, if it, some so this goes his way, he could kill two ties. Oh, that's three hits. Okay, we'll see what happens. Be unlikely, but... Takes All right, two. one evade. Man, really good round. For oh, he's got guys, crack so. shot. It's dead. Oh, you're right. He could just crack. Yeah. White is That's gone. a really good round for slow dive. Whoo. PS kill that. So, yeah, you, you, I was right. You do PS kill white. You just need one. You only need one guy to do it. <laughs> you only need one guy. You don't even need all three. Yeah, we had the right idea at first. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh wow. savage. Yeah, that was a statistical swing there for sure. Wow. He'd be able to kill two TIE fighters in one turn. So That's crazy. This when did um when did Vassal implement uh color marking? I really like that. That's been on there for a while. It's just a kind of a hidden feature. It's uh you use oh. the for those watching at home, little mini Vassal tutorial, it's control M to change the color. And you can do it on That's dials as well. Really handy. Mm -hmm. Man, that really rough round for uh, Kurkul there. Uh, losing two ties and one of them not shooting. Only taking one shield off one of them is going to hurt. I will say this, though. Without a doubt, as long as the Inquisitor is on the board, uh, Kurkul will still be in the game. Oh, for sure, yeah. The the TLTs, and B, if he can control range... And right. take advantage of his focus and auto thrusters and evade, and just make sure he just keeps one in arc at a time or one in range at a time, and be able yep. to just work him down. If I'm if I'm CRCL now, my new primary objective is to get as much damage on the one with intel as possible, because you do not want that intel agent still on the board at the end with the inquisitor. You want to be able to have the inquisitor finish off that that one um, quickly. Because intel will mean that these locks can just be in a really good position to bump and prevent Inquisitor from getting actions. And actionless Inquisitor is not happy against TLTs. No, he's very sad. Very sad. So AP1 uh, probably sh and he needs to be able to generate some time for the Inquisitor to get in position. Uh, what do you, what do we think an Inquisitor is going to do here? Maybe a little uh, little three bank action to the left. Ah man, if I'm the Inquisitor, I'm doing, I'm doing a three forward and then uh, taking my boost, um, evade target lock. I'm gonna boost a uh, three forward boost evade target lock because I still don't want him to change my that target priority and get three TLTs on me. Right, and that means you can keep chipping away at the guy you started on. Um, let's see. If I'm these TIE fighters, man, that, that red, I think that red is in line to hit that rock. So I think you need to do a two bank with the red. I think you need to do, man, mm, a two forward with teal. And I think you got to do a, a three hard with magenta and try to get a bump in. But again, I'm, everyone has different play styles. Trying to call what a dial could be against squads that you know I haven't flown or Dion hasn't flown really hard to do. These guys know these squads best, and oh. they'll do you know situationally what they feel is the best thing. Absolutely, yeah. And I liked your idea for the the three forward and then left left bank. It gives you a little bit more space to be able to generate exactly. some space from the guy in the front. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Also smart. means that um, it doesn't lock you in to any specific lane like a three bank would it means that if you need to you could do a three bank next turn and go wide or you could do a one hard and start cutting up in the middle keeps your uh, trajectory a bit 
um, you know, a bit in the air for your opponent. Mm-hmm. So slow dive still has those three target locks and the inquisitor hanging out there with long range scanners. Those are going to be staying there, staying there Absolutely. until you can use them for sure. Yeah, he he's just going to leave them there, which is really smart. Um, one crack shot being spent is you know is a big deal for the inquisitor, uh, survivability wise. So that's why again three forward boost or something like that because you do you do not want to get the inquisitor in a position to be in three TLT shots at all. Mm-hmm. So you got to play it a little carefully. So dials are set. Here come, here comes the block. Three hard, just getting in the way. Three hard and focus and pray. Nailed it. <laughs> and then here come the Skurgs. Four forward, avoiding the block. Smart. Smart. Man. Yep. Uh, he should be able to avoid the block with all three of these guys here. That Academy will be out of that one TLT, though, which is good. People are telling me about this overlay thing I'm using. They're like, hey, you can do this. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that. It's the one that I usually use actually uh, wasn't working before we got on. I was trying to eat my dinner and fix computer things at the same time. I was like, all right, mm -hmm. got to go with the backup plan. And this is... It's a very, very capable backup plan. So, thank you for the advice, my peeps. Let's see, yellowish, that work? Boom. Very cool. Probably works a little bit better than what I did. I just wrote on a note no card all the uh, uh, all, all right. the all the Tie Fighters in order with the colors that in which I put them. But I guess now the people the people can know. You do it with all the TIE Fighters, too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So, we had a, a pink TIE Fighter. Really good barrel roll there um, with that Skurg. Does a two hard with um, one of, with his black evades. Inquisitor taking it slow, just doing a one bank. There you go, Ryan. You you talk to the people while I play with colors. Oh yeah, you you, you play, play with crayons there, bud. <laughs> Again, his Tie Fighter arcs are in a rough position right now. Um, looks like he's gonna only get one shot with one of his black squadrons. I'm not even. I don't think the Inquisitor will get a range three on one of those Skurgs. It, it could be close. Um, oh, Whoa. he's gonna try and target lock first with the Inquisitor. It's a little, little soft range check. So he's going to boost. Huh. And he still has push the limit if he wants to. And now he's going to try to target lock uh, number two. And definitely has him in range. Yeah, for sure. This does mean that the Inquisitor's in a bit of, you know, he's kind of decently committed to, um, that's not necessarily true. I take that back. I was going to say he has to go wide now, but he could do a one hard and barrel roll back in if he had to. But I think the Inquisitor is totally, you know, fine with going wide around this rock formation. He, he's he got a good enough dial to be able to just figure it out. He'll have For sure, time. without a doubt. So take that target lock for man. That title is so good. Free evade. And he was already taking one shield off this guy. Let's see what else he can get done here. Again, just chipping away. If it, if it becomes the Inquisitor versus two of these guys, you know, I, I could yeah, spend that lock. Spend that lock. Yeah, yeah, you spend that. <laughs> oh, ah. blanking a brutal. Still oh, hits two though. Yep. I feel like target locking blank to blank on Vassal feels worse 
than oh, absolutely. in person because it you, doesn't even change. You're not even rolling it. Just you hear the sound and nothing's moved. Right. <laughs> you sad. When I first started playing, I wasn't sure. I was like, did it glitch? Did it even roll? He's like, oh, it rolled. <laughs> <laughs> quote, quote, unquote, rolled. Right. Now it's interesting, you know. He he now goes back with the Tie Fighter into the uh, the Yellow Mark Scourge, uh, Lock Revenant number three. Right. Um, well, he doesn't have two in range, so you got to pick one. You might as well pick the one with Intel. Well, that's not that's not the one with Intel. Oh, it's not. Nope. I thought that's no, number one, oh. the full health one. Oh well. Oh, sorry. It's because there's damage on one already. It's yeah. got. Uh, yeah, that makes more sense. So he's taking down two shields there. All right, we're gonna decide on some TLTs. He's gonna go at uh, Black Squadron number three, which, Makes sense. which is the blue guy. Three hit, hits. hit, hit, hit! Ugh, brutal. That's gonna get through. Yep. Take a damage there. Keep thinking those hits are crits. From the overlay, yeah. So you see that it's it's hard, like with the uh, chroma keying out the right. It that chroma key is really nice though, dude. Really well done. It it's just it take it's taking just a little bit too much white, and it's like taking out the center. Uh, I'm like, uh, <laughs> but it's it's better fine. than what it would be otherwise. Oh, absolutely. It's interesting that um, <laughs> you're chromaing out white. It's so rare. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and that's another one gonna get through there. Yeah. Yep. So he's down really good TLT rolls happening for slow dive right now. Oh, for sure. That's another three. That could be it. Yep, that'll do it. It's a dead tie fighter, I think. <laughs> slow dive is like these dice, man. <laughs> in the in the vassal chat, those of you who aren't watching the vassal chat. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? Slow dive's right. He hasn't. I don't think he's rolled two blanks yet on a TLT. Yeah, and, but it doesn't hurt to have mods. He does. He had mods. He's putting himself in a good situation. And I think yes. one of the things we might be talking about when we when we circle back around and 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 wrap up the commentary on this game is the fact that because the swarm got split, he was able yes. to pick them off little by little. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, not entirely sure if splitting the swarm in that way was the right call. Obviously, we're in deep core. We have some really really talented players here. But when you do that, you really reduce the threat that your enemy has to deal with with all those arcs on one thing at once. Natties. But again, as long as he's got the Inquisitor, he is still in this game. No doubt about that. And it looks like taking one hole on the pink TIE Fighter. And if I'm that academy, I'm next turn. Um, I'm blasting five forward, even, even if even with even the if rock? I gotta go, even if I gotta go through that rock, I need to, you need that academy. He's not getting arcs on anybody, right? Like, um, unless you really want to do a one hard and barrel roll back, but that academy's not gonna survive another turn. You might as well get him as far away as possible from those TLTs. Try to get some obstruction in there and. Circle him wide back around to get a, a clutch block later on. Make him useful late in the game. Just get in retreat mode. There you go. So we're on round five uh, of the game. You see they have the little shield counter there. That's interesting when, I'm, when I've been doing these games or I jump on Vassal. They're like, oh, Dion, let's actually see if it's like 11 turns. And it usually is. <laughs> it's, just, it's cool to see like my work be like see I told you guys I wasn't lying <laughs> this could be that one of those games that goes a little heavier though depending on variants because that inquisitor can really it'll take a while for the inquisitor to chip down the yep. skurgs and also it'll take a while for the skurgs to potentially chip down the inquisitor oh yeah for sure this this game I'm going to predict uh, if the inquisitor doesn't take any damage from the TLTs here anytime soon probably looking around 15 turns I will, I will not make a guess. <laughs> that's 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 how I'm a politician. How how about this? If we set the line at fourteen and a half turns, you're going o over or under. Fourteen and a half, huh? 
I'm going under. You're going under. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I'll go under 14 and a half. That's a, that's a, that's probably a, that's a strong bet. 15 is a lot, and we're already that's, on turn five only. That's so many. That's just so many turns. Um, we'll see though. We'll see. I, I just, man, with those two crack shots on the board, which I'm almost positive he's gonna save for the Inquisitor. If he didn't have those crack shots, maybe. But that's all. That's, you know, fairly certain you're gonna use get two hits using those crack shots right off the bat, and then you just need the you know the Inquisitor's dice to poop out twice. It can happen. We're waiting for them to set some dials. So Ryan's thinking about just getting that Tie Fighter out of there so it can do some blocking. I I'm in agreement with that. I think it's a, it's an aggressive play, but you have to do it um, if you want a chance there to be able to. to There's do some another hurt. side reason why you do it too, Dio. And let's say even if you take a damage, you know that sucks. But let's say you do, and you zip that guy out. You can then move your Black Squadron. You do a one hard with your Black Squadron that still has that crack shot, and. Now you've made an enticing target for your opponent. Do you waste a TLT shot on that one or two Hall Academy that doesn't have any tokens, or do you go all in on that Black Squadron? Eventually the variants will kick back around on these TLTs. They will not remain as hot as they have been. It's just not, I mean, statistically that's not how it'll work. Mm -hmm. So you, you're still creating really tough decision, decisions for your opponent. Um, what do you do with the Inquisitor here? You one hard barrel roll, or do you just go, you know, three bank boost? Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of getting myself caught in corners. Yeah, me either. I, I mean, if I'm the Inquisitor, I think you you one hard in yeah. your barrel roll, or you you know you just see where it leads you. Mm -hmm. So it looks like he uh, he did a one hard with the Tie Fighter here. Maybe he barrel rolls to try to take up some space. And again, even if he does this, like. It's still a tough choice for slow dive, um, whether he barrel rolls or not with the academy. He's gonna evade. All he's right. He's gonna evade. Now he's now it's still it's still tough. He has to decide. You know, is he gonna take which tie fighter is he gonna shoot at? And here's one question: Maybe he's, I don't want to say serving up the tie fighter, but puts a tie fighter in an enticing position, and maybe also brings in the inquisitor and say, "Hey, who are you gonna shoot?" And if he shoots at you know a range three inquisitor through the rock because he can instead now, of the TIE Fighter. This is a really interesting decision, doing a Talon roll that I do like a lot because now the Inquisitor's no longer, now they're no longer running from the Inquisitor. They'll be able to come full force right at him. Yep. So the Inquisitor's now got to be on the defensive in this situation. Yeah, hopefully he didn't go into that corner because that, that's going to be yeah. bad. If he did do a one hard, he's okay. He's still got room to play. Yes, Cleaning up those uh, those talents. Well, yeah. I mean that academy does a five forward. You know he's he's, he's safe. Probably out of those arcs. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm not telling you how to play CRCL. <laughs> no, you know what? With my honestly, if I did that, I'd probably roll a crit into a direct hit and be just blow up. <laughs> I mean, you guys went through the damage deck. We know it's possible. You know, we know that it happens. It can. Oh happen. yeah, it's so true. <laughs> oh man, I just rolled a. Uh, I rolled a. I'm working on running plot armor right now for regionals, practicing up. And last night at league, I lost to a new player. You know, running Ray, and Ray roll rolls up with trick shot, gets a range one shot through an asteroid at Poe. With trick shot, so I've got three dice and I'm all everything and rolls, just naturally without any re rolls, rolls three hits and three crits with Ray. Oh, uh, well he re rolls the fin right into a crit, so three hits, three crits, and I, I only get one evade with Poe, and <laughs> I roll, I draw for my crit, I draw, I get a major explosion, into a direct hit, Poe just dead Poe. <laughs> Hello. Right, the dream, beautiful. Hello, Ray. Yep. <laughs> my dice. <laughs> my dice. But my dice. All right. So. Trick shot Ray. Ugh. Anyway, so that Inquisitor did decide to move in and continue wide. Going to keep chipping away at one of these guys. Um, hopefully he can get into Hull here. That black will. You know, he's got the black and the Inquisitor together will definitely do some damage onto one of these. Yep. 
So Discordia is our CRCL is deciding what he's going to do for his action. Obviously clears the stress. I don't understand that uh, that emoji. What is that emoji? Uh, if you scroll over, it says table wrecked. Oh, table wrecked. Beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so he's barrel rolling to the right. Give him some space for range three. And yeah, it's, it's a smart decision. It also gives him, again, next round, if he wants to, he can still do a one hard and barrel roll. Mm -hmm. He gets his target lock. He gets his evade. That means he's going to have a shot. So just work it, working that guy down. So yeah, just chip away. That's all he can do. Like I said, if he can get, you know, t one of these guys off the board before he loses these other two tie fighters, he's in reasonably good shape. Also, that barrel roll is immensely helpful to get him out of another TLT arc potentially. All right, so gets gets one. We're gonna try to do a re-roll here. Come on, target lock. Ooh, oh, hit hit crit. I think only has two shields, so. Oh, he gets the evade though. All right, shields are gone. But we're probably gonna have a follow up shot from the uh, black squad here. The red one. No doubt. One. And if I'm the if I'm him, I gotta spend. If I get anything decent, you gotta spend the crack shot. Oh if... yeah. He's got to focus. He's open for at least get one hit crit. Hit crit. That yep. crit's coming through. Yeah, without a doubt. Blank doesn't even need to spend the crack. All right. Let's see what this crit is. And loose stabilizer. So he's gonna get a stress token. No, 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 no. That's no, that's, uh, that's thrust control. Oh. Loose stabilizer is your whites are red until you flip it. There you go. Let me double check. Loose stabilizer. Just to be sure. I'm sure one of you have the uh, damage deck thing open. After you execute a white maneuver, receive a stress token, or you can take an action to flip this card face down. That's actually bad for the Skirks. Their greens are really limited. Yep. And they got a fair amount of whites, so you know you can get in a bad situation of just getting stress after stress after stress on these guys. There we go. I know it has something to do with stress. I'm like, what? Nah. You were you were right. You were there. I was in the you ballpark. Ballpark. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. All righty. So we're measuring TLTs gonna go at the black squad number two and blanks out there's the other side of variance there told you man it, it, it's just gonna it's going to happen with these uh there's focus focus blank and he's stressed and he, so that's he's it. stressed so that's it these t you know people talk about tlts a lot and they're just they're like oh but they feel it feels bad when somebody rolls three hits in a row every time and then they get their mods and everything but unmodded tlt shots yeah there's a lot of variance involved but, you know, you're going to get triple blank outs on them. You just got to, you know, nut up and gut it out until that variant swings back in your favor. So we're going at Black Squadron 4 with the primary here. Looks uh, like. It's obstructed. Now. Oh, no, he did the uh, primary there. Not entirely sure. No, no. I think he evaded. Not entirely sure what happened there. Sorry, I was just checking. Got a little confused there as to what just happened. Yep. Focus for defense on the first attack. That's what I thought. Okay. Got so it, he didn't it. take any. Yeah, he's not going to take any. Safe. Well, that's huge. I mean, not taking any damage and being able to get uh, a couple more damage here. It's great. And then one hole from the second, uh, second TLT attack. Right. Just one. I'm sure you can get out of this one. Come on. There it is. There it is. Okay. So he's that that black sticking around. Oh, nope. Crack shot. He's going to spend it. Okay. So that's an extra crack one shot. in there. Now there's a really good shot that he takes this uh, black squadron out. But again, hurting, hurting his ability to potentially take down the Inquisitor later. 
Mm-hmm. Though that that you know what I do agree though using that crack because that lock is not long for this world. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> for sure. One hit. Mm. One hit. Dead. Looks like he's gone. He spent that focus, I think. Yep, use the focus. And we lo- lose another ship. So we got uh, what, one TIE fighter with two hole left. Uh, at yep. PS1 and the Inquisitor left. So we'll see how this goes. All right, so the good news is that the Inquisitor with a decent roll could take out one of these guys could take out the three hull really hurts losing that black for CRCL, but that Academy could maybe do a one hard barrel roll and get back into the fight a little bit. Um, Inquisitor's just going to have to, you know, put the team on his back here <laughs> again, though, the one with Intel agent is full. So yep. that is going to be a major you know, player here. And at this point, it's going to be the last ship on the board. Because if you're an Inquisitor, you got to take the ships that have lost health. Um, you might want to mark that the um, other Revenant. Yep, I'm going to uh, grab it right now. It's number two. Yeah. Crack is cracked. Boom. So both dials are down for the Imperial player, for Mr. Slow Dive. Or Miss. I don't know. I don't know. Can't assume. Nothing. Person. <laughs> I don't assume gender. That's right. Let's see. Man, I don't know. I don't know what I would do uh, here. I think I would do just a one bank with the Inquisitor. You get, you take that risk of getting into three TLT um, bubbles, but a one bank gives you flexibility to. Oh, are those one banks green for the Inquisitor? They are. I think they are. Right? They yeah. Are. So sure. that gives you the flexibility of barrel roll still. All right, Twitch chat. What's what's gonna be your move here? What would what would you do? What would Inquisitor do? The, whoever guesses correctly gets a billion dollars. What? A billion <laughs> fake dollars you in go. your in your head. <laughs> Pretend that you're. Uh, think of all the things you'd spend with the, the fake billion dollars that we're gonna give you. <laughs> the imaginary dollars. No joke. So when I was in college, my wife and yeah. I we had we had a couple rough months money wise. Uh, and you know, we, we couldn't go out or anything like that. It was right. just pretty much at home sitting in the dark because we couldn't even pay the electric bill. It was like, keep everything, every, everything low anyway. So we did this thing. It was like, all right, what would you do if we had a million dollars? And we, we actually like charted out on paper nice. how we would spend it. It was very responsible. It was like, you know, pay off bills and, you know, do all this other stuff. Trust fund. Yeah. <laughs> So I so I used to work at a I used to be a bartender for a while and uh, I worked for this this scuzzball boss he was like the worst and you know he wasn't around when we were closing and I had a manager who hated him too and you know everything was in cash so at one point after work we had literally sitting on the table like fifty thousand dollars in cash Jeez. because it was a it was Fourth of July weekend at this bar slash outdoor barbecue tourist trap and he turns to me and says, "All right, Ryan." There's a casino <laughs> 40 minutes away. We go to the roulette table. We put 50,000 on red. If we win, each of us get 25 grand. We give the boss back his money and no no one's none the wiser. If we lose, we have to move to Mexico because <laughs> <laughs> he will kill us. <laughs> and I went Oh boy, as my heart started beating, I started sweating, and I went, I'm getting a reaction right now that says this is a really, really bad idea. And then he casually says, Oh, I'm joking. And he goes, But seriously. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. <laughs> I was out. I just went home. I'm not I'm not ready for that. My life is not set for high the stakes of that magnitude. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Alright, so he takes the uh the one hard and now he's decided. Think- Debating a barrel roll, maybe? Yeah, for sure. There it is. So he's going to decide how uh, how far forward or back he can take it. I think it's the right play. Just get him in there. Get him in the thick. 
get him in the way. Hopefully, you take away a couple of actions from the scourge, or at the very least, you're you know you're taking a shot away because they got to take one to hit him, or else you, they're going to get a return fire. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, a couple dice unmodded from a you know an academy, not very scary, but you never know. You get two hits and a crit. We've seen weirder things happen at range one shots with two dice. Oh or three. yes. So oh, what just happened? Oh, he just, he just clicked the wrong maneuver. Okay. So, two left bank. Clears that guy. He's probably going to end up having a TLT shot on the Inquisitor. Takes, yeah. Takes his focus. It was a good maneuver. There you go. Sure. There's the block. There's really the block. strong. He might be able to do a little bit of uh you know two-car pile up here if the, uh, the back guy came fast. No, okay, so not quite. Really good piling by these for, uh, on these skurgs from slow dive, and he still has all three locks on the Inquisitor. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if he shoots a TLT at him, he's gonna have some target lock focus. So he decides to go with the one hard. He's probably gonna decide to be a little more cagey, which is fine if he's gonna play the long game. He's got to get out of these arcs though. He has to, or else auto thrusters aren't gonna proc. All right, so barrel rolls behind the rock. He's probably just going to take his target lock and evade, I'm guessing. Yeah, without a doubt. Now he's getting obstruction, probably hitting range three of some of these if he's lucky. Um, correct maneuver there. But the Skurgs are starting to close in and move into intel range. So I can't believe these things have barrel roll. <laughs> They're huge. Like, come on. The, you're saying these things can barrel roll and X-Wings can't? Come on. Come on. That's the X-Wing fix, man. Barrel rolls. Like hit, hit. Target lock. Such good offense. Ah. Uh, not quite. Mm. Oh, man. If he could have been a hit. Both get through. Would have finished that guy off. Yeah, that would have been huge to have be able been able to reduce the yeah. shot. It would have been really big. But... I mean, the problem there is he's got to waste a whole nother turn trying to finish that guy off. I mean, it was reasonably unlikely that he kills him that turn anyway. Mm -hmm. um, the variance kind of, I think, evened itself out there, but still really rough that he's got to... Now that um, the one-hole skirt can just get in there and try to block him. So, all right, here come the TLTs of the Inquisitor. We got target lock focus versus and auto thrusters and four should have Yeah, should have auto thrusters there. Uh, no, he doesn't. It's range two. Oh, well, he's probably out of arc. I, I arc. believe he's out of arc. Don't tell me. No, he doesn't, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't look at the arc. <laughs> Getting a little... Feeling a little D right there. <laughs> Feels good to do it sometimes. Yeah, doesn't right? it? Doesn't it feel good just to, to shut me down? Oh, natties. Oh, nice. Oh, where's my where's my natties quote? <laughs> oh, he did it again. Crazy. Safe. Man, an evading three focuses is very scary though. <laughs> <laughs> How oh, nice. You've got Darth Maul yelling natties. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so good. All right. We're waiting for that top skirt. Spin the lock. Hmm. Two crits. Probably doesn't get through. Thrusters, he's fine. Yeah. Again, man, the the Inquisitor can do work on this, on these guys. He's just got to really avoid getting bumped. And the Academy is going to get a fairly nice shot here, too. <laughs> no crack. 
So it looks like that got one shield through uh, through the Inquisitor there. Oh, wait, oh, sorry. Oh, because it cracked. Because he cracked, right? Yeah, let me double check that. I think that's right. Yep. Yeah, okay. So that, yeah, that last crack shot's been used. Inquisitor loses a shield. All the crack is gone. All the drugs are gone. Oh, he's got to focus. It's going to be three coming in here. He can avoid it if he wants to. Yeah, he's got the evade yep. token still, I believe. Yep, he's auto thrusher's token, so. Yeah, he's good. Blink, ah, blink. blink. Got it. There it is. Auto thrusters for disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that you know I can. And like I said before, having to spend those crack shots on those other TIE fighters is problematic for slow dive because he really needs those to push through damage on the Inquisitor. He's gonna have to rely on bumping an Intel agents now in order that Intel agent in order to restrict the Inquisitor's ability uh, to dodge his shots. Yeah, and the the decision that slow dive is going to have to make here is how is he going to approach? Because really, oh, well, I guess that academy doesn't have a shot. I thought he might uh, clip that other skirt. Apparently, I was wrong. Yeah, it was pointed out a little bit, but uh, CRCL has the decision whether he can he can choose to either go to the right or continue straight if he wants to. It's a little bit of a fifty fifty decision here. Slow dive can decide to split the skurgs up if he wants to. Um, yeah, that's no problem at all. He. That, I mean, that, um, I think you, okay, so let me just go down the line. I think the one at one hole does a two bank towards the Inquisitor and barrel rolls right at him. Uh, that way, you're pretty much guaranteeing you're not taking a shot from him. Um, and that's a green, so that'll clear that stress as well. I think the, you just, you go straight to with your, uh, was that number two? Number one. Yeah, straight two with number one. Uh, just take a focus, and you one bank with number three. Take a focus. Start fanning out those TLTs so the Inquisitor has nowhere to go. For uh, CRCL, the Academy is in a pretty rough spot right now. Yeah, um, maybe maybe a K turn to get to try to get a gun on gun on something. I think, yeah, I think you got a 3K and challenge uh, Slow Dive to waste a shot on you. Kill me, kill me, look at me over here. <laughs> that Academy still has two hole, though. Like, with a good roll, like, he could take he could take one TLT shot and live. Mm -hmm. And then your Academy gets some firepower in the game. It's amazing that he's still alive, quite frankly. The little tie that could. This shows how much I know about this game. I thought, I mean, I was going to have him run away and peel out, but I guess it was the correct decision to pull him in right here. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, right? If he peels, he peels out, you know, he's, he's not contributing. Right. And arguably, um, unfortunately, I don't remember, but you could say that being able to stop that action may have saved the Inquisitor a damage if he was able to have full oh, shots. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt, yeah. So why I'm this is why I'm not in a uh, deep core. <laughs> yeah, man. I I tried to be in the Vassal League, but my my schedule is so so tight with all the other all the other X-wing stuff I'm doing. Like it's it's very hard. Right, absolutely. You get it. You get it. You're right there with oh, me. Oh, yeah, man. I, trust me. I get it. So we're waiting for slow dive to put down these uh, these dials here. This is an important turn for for slow dive. If he can catch the inquisitor, I mean the game's over. Um, but if he oh, make, with, if he makes the wrong choice, it could be bad. 
And li- like I said before, this is still anybody's game. Like that, the Inquisitor's the, you know, he's the trump card. He does a really good job at all these aces with auto thrusters. Any auto thruster ace is going to be a problem for TLTs. And once one of these gets removed from the board, one of these Skurgs, it's going to have it's going to tilt heavily in favor of the Inquisitor. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Hard right one and evade with the TIE Fighter. All right. Maybe looking to just be able to do probably taking the long con turning around with him. So next turn you can do a one hard back the other way. Mm-hmm. All right. The Hertzkerg is coming in fast with a with a two bank. Is he gonna barrel roll? Oh, I, he doesn't probably doesn't need to now. I actually brought him a little further than I thought. That's in good position to block wherever the Inquisitor is going to go. And make it so that the Inquisitor is not going to want to uh, to boost away from range one if he, don't, if right. he turns to the right. So I like his I like that spot because it's protecting that Skurg. It only has one hole left. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I thought the two bank is clearly the obvious maneuver for him to do it's gives him the most options i think he, he clears that stress too um but i think that's green right for them i'm pretty sure yeah yeah so you know you clear stress take an action maybe get rid of that crit i would probably just take a take a focus so i could chip at that academy um yeah i think he's debating whether to barrel roll or not though mm-hmm. i wouldn't personally I think you're in a really good spot. Yeah, there, there's no... I'm trying to think. Is there any maneuver that... They... I'm not, I can't really tell on Vassal. One bank to the right from the Inquisitor, you know, could end up messing you up. Focus. Yeah, that's a good call. Ooh. Yeah, he's coming in hot, so... Yeah, he is. Really banking on that bump. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if uh, if CRCL calls this and he peels out with the inqui- oh he he has, he doesn't have anywhere to go right now. I was like oh no, he, 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 he can he can kind of try yeah, to go fast. This is a really good outside. job by um, by slow dive here. He's painting the Inquisitor into a pretty rough spot. And I don't know if the Inquisitor has space to go. See he uh, he tried to go fast. Yeah, and that is. You know, it's actually not terrible, though, because he's only going to take one range one shot. I think he'll be, he won't, you know, he's not going to, he's not getting TLT'd. He's out of arc of another one. You know, he is. So Inquisitor shoots. Does one, one shield yeah. on LR3. And oh, does it clip? I think so. I think it's gonna clip that back end at range one. Yeah, he's got him. Yeah, this is this could be bad. No crack shot though. Four with the focus. Math says two. We'll see. This is this is bad. Four v three. Blank hit hit blank. All right, all right. So roll average roll average. One shield. Okay. All right. Yep. Inquisitor gets away with a actually pretty average on both rolls there. Yeah. We're talking. Yeah. Alrighty, so being it that getting that shield's a big deal. Yes, uh, that's that pretty big. Going after that uh, academy obstructed now, I think. Yeah. That's two TLT shots on it. Safe. I'll try again. Using focus for two. 
still has the evade token. Uh, that's going to hit. Ah, Triposi, rough. And he's going he's gonna to be sitting at one. He's still going to have another TLC shot coming at him. This one, I think, is definitely obstructed. Oh, yeah. I don't know if the other one was. Yeah. Three v four, so he's got a better chance, and he hasn't spent that evade yet, so he right. might be able to might be able to get out of these. As a focus, though, Skurg does so. True. Ooh. Oof. Natty's nah, baby. Uh, uh, not quite, not quite. There's a blank in there, but close. Oh, okay, I got it. I got excited. He did. It's gonna be two coming in now. Got oh, it. that token. Use the token. Woof. 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 Close. Academy will live to be a nuisance again. <sighs> All right. Inquisitor's still in a very bad spot, though, because now he's in that. He's in Intel range. Yeah. And we got. So then all, all three will be able to see where he's going and then adapt to for the block. Yeah. This is this is where the triple ships with barrel roll is great. Yeah, without a doubt. If you're the Inquisitor, you gotta you gotta get out. You gotta, you know, you got a three bank boost. I want off the ride. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to play anymore. I want off. Yep, and the dial's open. He's not stressed, so he really no. he can do anything there. Yeah, he can do. <laughs> yeah, he can do anything. <laughs> I think three bank is what you have to do. I don't think there's any way that these scurs can block it. Because they're... Uh, no, there's not. Because they're facing the other way. Exactly. So, you know, three bank, you boost to the... You know, or you just turtle up. Now, if um, if slow dive... Now he, here's the thing with having that range two to three turret. Slow dive is gonna have to try to anticipate this. He can't go too fast. He's gonna he's gonna want to keep his guns on the Inquisitor. Uh, right. But if he goes too slow, he might get caught in the range one bubble. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting dance that you have to do with you know your TLTs, and there is a fair amount of skill involved that people don't realize. It's not just huck and dice. You know, you have m managing that bubble is difficult. More. So so with Y wings, uh, it's a little more easy mode when you get these ships that can barrel roll, especially quad uh, aggressors. Oh yeah. Which I still think is a tier one point five squad. You could win a regional with quad aggressors if you're good and you practice with them. I agree. I agree. I mean, you're you're really hugging the 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 variants, you know, there, but still. Um. Still, without a doubt, a player. And, like, uh, MSRP-wise, it's the cheapest competitive X-Wing squad you can buy. <laughs> yep. Get a 60 corset. bucks. Yep. 60 bucks and then a core set. Or just buy dice and a and a damage deck. You're good to go. All right, Ryan. Oh, let, let, let's, let's make a blood pact. If FFG asks us to do one of those $100 squad things, we just do that. Oh, there's no question. <laughs> Four and a core set, that's, you're done. That's 100 bucks right there. Yep. That's what I'm saying. And be like, there's no better way to hop into a casual and competitive X Wing than four TLTs. Yep. You might not have any friends when you leave, but. <laughs> you know what? I could actually, I could also make a squad. I would pick uh, the new, um, I'd pick new corset. And you could feasibly make a squad with three of those aggressors with TLT and then two of those crappy TIE FOs. Um, <laughs> Just because you want to make it different? I mean, yeah, I mean, if I have to come up with a couple more squads on an X-Wing 101's list, like, that's what I'm doing. You can, I mean, you. I think you have Zeta Leader, you have High Roller in there that you True. can pick. Um, and that's actually not a bad filler. You you know, tuck in three dice. Because um, you gotta, it sucks that you have to take the core set. You're down 40 bucks already for basically nothing. It's yeah. like, do you want R2, do you want R2-D2 or do you want Poe? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the question you have to ask. And then, and then, I, then I, you know, I look at those articles and I go like, no, nobody plays forty dollars for the core set. Like, not even my store doesn't charge forty dollars for the core set. Yeah, I know, but yeah, you, but you have to go with MSRP on that. That's the article. 
What's harder though is making a squad, making play like buying stuff to make squads for two factions. So I bought a friend of mine for Christmas some of this X Wing stuff, and I got her a Heroes of the Resistance, a core set, and an Imperial Veterans and a Tie FO expansion. And with all that, you got a lot to play with. Oh yeah. So uh, real real quick here, back to the game. Uh, Intel revealed a three right turn, so he's gonna try to swing around that rock. He's definitely gonna be safe um, from yeah. being blocked. Yeah, and this is this is good because that means the Inquisitor can boost to the right and get right back into the fight super fast. It's actually way better than the three bank I was thinking. Academy doing a one hard there, probably just gonna evade. Yeah, trying just trying to bait some shots away from the Inquisitor. Say, hey, shoot yeah, it's me. A, basically a shield upgrade at this point. Any shot not going at the Inquisitor is a good shot. Mm-hmm. And now we wait for the Skurgs. It's always interesting to see how people, when they have multiple ships with the same pilot skill, choose to move them because you can do a lot of creative things with self bumping. Right. Try to manage range. <laughs> oh, Chris is in the uh, the Twitch chat. What's up, Chris? So that three forward clears. Oof. It's probably one of those where <laughs> where he didn't want that one to clear. Probably be a little better if it was uh, far back to be able to get three TLT shots on the Inquisitor. Hmm. Waiting for this to pan out. But, again, it, you know, I really like this game because you're seeing two distinct aspects of the game going at it. Turrets and 80-degree firing arcs. Like, it's... You know, very much old X-Wing versus new X-Wing at this point. Because um, you don't see a lot of you know, swarms anymore, but you're seeing a lot of turrets in play. And if CRCL can pull this out, it's a you know a win for quote-unquote old X-Wing for arcs everywhere, you know? <laughs> well, it's a win for auto thrusters if he pulls yeah. it out. <laughs> hmm, this is interesting, though, deciding whether... Do you turtle He's, up or do you try to, to get out of Do our, you boost and evade or do you turtle up? I think you boost because it helps set you up for next round to get shots. Yeah, if you boost right and, you know, take an evade, that's – you're going to have auto thrusters. He doesn't have crack shots. Man, you are playing with fire there. But you get some you'll have obstruction on two of the shots, I think, if you boost right. Mm-hmm. I agree. He's he's go he's waffling. You can feel it. You can. It also means if he boosts right and takes a target lock on number two, he can not you know not spend it so that he can have more options next turn. You know, he could boost and focus and have focus target lock on whatever, but he'll, that's actually dumb because you want to spend that on defense. Just kind of talking to myself at this point. No, you're, you're good. I mean, you gotta got to be able to go through all the all the scenarios. We are at turn eight, though, getting, getting closer to that 14 and a half. All right, so he boosts left and barrel rolls away, trying to just get out of range. And uh, if anybody's in range, just let those auto thrusters do work. Interesting. All right. And he is in range of at least one of the TLTs. It's an interesting move. I mean, he'll have to one hard left next turn. So that's going to be two coming in, two versus three. He's fine. I wouldn't have used that focus there. I would have just let it pass. You want to save the focus for when you can get three. All right, so he comes out unscathed. 
from the first attack. We don't think any of the other ones are in range. There you go. The academy have a shot? Oh. Uh nope. looks like one of the Skurgs actually has a shot on the Academy. See if that Academy can survive and maybe get a return fire. Maybe that Academy can uh finish off something. He's debating. He only has one on there. Yep, he's going at the academy pilot here. Yeah, I mean, I would too. Try to get that thing off the board. Oof. That's three hits. That's going to be rough. Natty's? Did he focus or did he no, evade? He evaded. Ah, oh, dead. Oof. All righty. Mm. So we got Inquisitor versus three Skurgs. And this is the problem. I... I I really think he needed to wipe one of those Skurgs off the board before he lost all of it, all of his ties. Mm -hmm. um, three versus just the Inquisitor is really difficult because now he can manage that one that only has one hull. He can fly him away, keep him protected, make it bad shots. Um, it's going to be tough for the. I'm not saying it's impossible, but especially because he only has two hull, the variants won't be on his side. Yep, and I don't know too much about the at least in a tournament setting it being. You try to get as much MOV as you can. I'm not sure if in the Vassal League they're documenting MOV. I don't know. Yeah. Let us know in the uh, in the chat. I mean, does the does the MOV make a difference? MOV is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all we got. <laughs> yep. Actually, there won't be MOV in system opens. Don't lose two. That's the theme of the system opens this year. Don't lose two. <laughs> CRCL says uh, the question is can I snipe uh, Lock Revenant number two and reclaim some glory <laughs> so they're saying here MOV is the tiebreaker I guess it does matter then well a little bit yep cool. uh, you know what let's not even worry about MOV just win CRCL just win baby there you go <laughs> just win Yep. So uh, for the, anybody keeping uh, score, blah blah blah, words are hard. Keeping track of the score, it is currently sixty nine to zero. Savage. Yeah. They need to bring that half point small base rule in, and I would even go as far to say that um, if you ever uh, change it to if it's ever at half, you get half even if it regens up. Ah, clever. So. Once you reach half points on a ship, you get those half points regardless of, you know, whether it regens back up or not. And it should apply to small base and large base. We've reached that point in the game where these small base ships are so tanky and can be loaded up so much now that I think it's just got to be a necessary change. So he flips that crit on the uh, Hurt Lock Revenant, making sure that he can do whatever maneuver he wants now. And the Inquisitor just... He's going to have to just find his positioning, see where he wants to go. Chris, I wasn't saying in this game in particular. I just think for the game health, in for the entirety of the game, they should make that change. All right, well. <laughs> stupid weeb. Um, <laughs> we have... We might uh, hit that turn limit because we're going to have a couple turns, like non-turns in a second here. Uh -huh. These Skurgs are going to take a hot second to get back in formation, combine. Um, and you're going to see him take that injured one and keep it wide. Oh, for sure. And then, you know, the fact that the Inquisitor has to regroup is actually also to the advantage of the Lock Revenants player. Right. Because he has long-range scanners. So exactly. it, gives it gives him time to set it up. Yep, he'll be able to get those target locks again, swing back around, have fully modded shots on the Inquisitor, and he'll probably be able to control his arcs too so that mm, it's going to be tough. This is this is an, an uphill battle, a, a muddy uphill battle with no shoes on for CRCL right now. <laughs> Where are my shoes? Well, my shoes, my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. 
Dial's dial's already down, nice and quick for the Inquisitor. The onus is right now on slow dive to be able to take advantage of whatever it is that CRCL might be able to do. Now, if he has a let go in his hand, he can play that to you know make the revenants lose their TLT attachment, but he's gonna he'll really risk not being able to do that later on, which could affect his ability to break a province. Did you just L five army man? I don't know. Anything uh, you, about just that game. L5, you, you just got L five. You just got L five R. <laughs> I have I have a Scorpion L five R promo in my X Wing box because I found, do you how'd you get that I, I found I found it at my game store and I was like who what? is this and then, well, nobody's nobody claimed it and I was like okay I guess I have a Ayushi Shoju sure he's so good he's so good is he good yeah he's good yeah if you only have one political he can reduce you to zero and if you have zero political he can just take you off the board you're done that uh, yeah. Yeah, that's over. what I'm saying. Yeah, that's it. That, yeah, I'm totally anyway, qualified to be on your L5 R podcast now. See, you are. You you should come on honorable mention. It's, we have a good time. You know. Oh, you know what? You can bring me on as a guy who you teach how to play. See, look at that. Ah, oh, yes. There you go. So I won't touch you're, it until oh. until you're ready to have that. Have that <laughs> I'll be waiting. All righty. So Inquisitor looks like he's gonna try to. Try to find the back door here. He's like, I need, I need a chance. I, I need that uh, that lock revenant number two. I need to take it out. Diamond, we actually talked about the uh, bullseye expansion a little bit earlier. Um, we mentioned that I, I'm concerned a little bit about the bullseye arc, especially with the PSA pilot. Depending on how the ruling goes, on whether if you don't have any tokens, can you remove none, or can you remove? Do you have to then take damage? So, also, Dallin Obros is probably better in the Chemogila than he is the Star Viper. I agree. <laughs> Definitely. So here, while uh, while we're waiting, let's... Uh, we're definitely going to go over that 15-turn mark, Dion. I think you're going to win. Yeah. But... Give me my 50 grand. Fifty grand. No, I put it all. I put it all on red. I lost everything. <laughs> <laughs> lost everything, man. <laughs> oh man. Uh, last I knew, Travis was. I think he was two and two last I checked, but it's probably not. He definitely had two losses, and Zach Matthew, the Zach Matthews Carolina Great Podcast, also had several losses. I think he had three losses when I checked. Like for L five R. Un unrelated but related all at the same time. My issue with card games is at the highest levels, like people don't talk during the games and it's really strange to me. And I, I don't like that. Like I wanna like tell me what you're doing. Don't just like start moving cards around and like like a half tap of a card. It's I just I can't do it. Yeah, it's true. Though last night I was playing Poe, intensity Poe, and I without saying anything, did a one forward and then a boost and then put an evade on. And I started moving on and my opponent was like, what'd you, how'd you get an evade? And I went, <laughs> Oh, Oh geez. Sorry. I, let, me, let me explain <laughs> what, what everything that just happened there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're waiting, waiting for the inquisitor to come up, come back around. Skurgs are coming back around. Dials now are... the inquisitor is also, fighting that turn limit he's got to get in and just he's got to kill two of these no uh, he's, he's got to kill, kill all three. three he's only at 31 he's, he's on 31 now oh brutal he's toast yep it's this is a game this game just by turn limit is going probably i, I would put a solid 90 percent going to slow dive because i he just doesn't have time not enough time yep at this point it's just get get your mov and have a good day yeah. So Dalen Oberos, what's his ability here? So it says, at the start of combat phase, you may acquire a target lock on an enemy ship inside your bullseye firing arc at range 1 to 3. All right, that's good. Yeah, well, you're going to hit like a hammer yeah. against anything in that bullseye arc uh -huh. because they are not they can't spend any tokens. Uh, you can't spend any tokens if you're in it. I'll However, look. if I'm using Poe, I can still change my focus with my Poe kiss, so... Small victories. Take them where I can get them. 
This is very true. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, you probably wouldn't put R4 Agri Mech on this guy because you're You can also auto thrusters against that bullseye arc too if you're at range three, which is useful. Yep. All right, let's say the Inquisitor pops one of these guys this turn, which he will not. <laughs> <they're out> <laughs> let's let's pretend. Okay. But let's say he gets him this next turn. If he can get that sucks that that was out, but if he can kill the one at one hull, he can survive two TLT shots, maybe. But let's <laughs> <laughs> pray. Ah oh, man, it just sucks. The, the one downside with that Inquisitor is that no matter what, you're only ever rolling three dice. Yep. You can, you can that never get that damage. extra spike damage. Yep. So he needs, if he's lucky, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. If he's lucky, he needs six more turns. To kill all of them. Connor just went up to 12. Yeah, and that brings him to 18. Yeah. Turns. I mean, there's a little leeway there. You get 19, so you know what? That means he just needs to do... Kill the one at one hole, and then get three hits every time against the rest of them. That's Easy. Right. And, and throw some crit... Easy. He gets target locks. He gets some crit potential as well. I mean, if you have to, like in your last turn, roll some hit, reroll hits into crits, reroll three hits into three crits, do it. No balls. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give us the math on that. We're not math guys. What oh, the, dude, re uh, rolling three crits does not. Yeah. It seem seems low. Well, it, I, my intuition is that it's very low percent chance. <laughs> is it one eight know, one eighth times one eighth times one eighth? Is that how that works? I don't think. So I think the answer is two. <laughs> Chris Allen says 50-50 chance. Either it happens or it doesn't. I'm Listen, I'm not a mathematician, but that doesn't sound right. I don't think it's 50-50% chance. <laughs> I mean, I could flip a coin 100 times and have 99 tails, and I could roll you know, my dice 100 times and have 100 times where it doesn't hit. So maybe, maybe, it's, maybe that math is right. All right, let's. Where are these guys going? If I did the math right, the chance of rolling rolling three crits is point one nine percent doable. So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> <laughs> if I did that right, I could have done that completely wrong. But it, it's, it's again, we we were pretty sure it was low. This Inquisitor, he's got to go, man. Got to get him. And the hurt guy, the hurt guy flew away. I mean, that's that's the right choice. You can that save is, that MOV. Absolutely. There's a two thousand percent chance, and I'm correct in my math. Mm. Two hundred percent chance, I, or two. You know what? I, I, screw. I'm two thousand percent correct. <laughs> oh man, it's fine every I mean, time. Everything's fine. Inquisitor is just going at it. It's like, I got this, guys. Go out in a blaze of glory. Mama didn't raise no bitch. Get him. Get him. Oh, he's trying to boost, I think. Or barrel or brawl. Cannot brawl. No brawls. No brawling, baby. Close. Close, but no cigar. I'll oh, just focus target lock. Just do it. <laughs> do it. It's fine. You only, you only need eight turns. Six turns, sorry. You only yep. need six turns to do it. And hope that he didn't ever, doesn't roll a single of eight every time. And a bag of salt is my favorite uh, reward, uh, tournament award. Hey, hey, Chris, will, will you be giving out bags of salt in the salt mines for... Um, Crate cup? <laughs> Are you gonna be giving out salt like uh crate cup salt shakers to the bottom tables? Actually, that'd be a pretty awesome <laughs> prize. <laughs> Could buy a whole bunch of salt shakers with the crate logo on it. Yep. I'm sure there's somebody. It, who isn't would do that, that for a great you. idea? 
<laughs> oh, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom tables get salt shakers. <laughs> there you go. There it is. Make it happen. Yes. <laughs> you can get them so cheap, too. Get the big ones that have those nozzles and just have, like, uh, crate stickers you put on them. Yeah, that's exactly I mean, what I was how... thinking. The Morton salt ones, yeah. Yeah, the Morton salt, exactly. How expensive could it really be to get a bunch of those and fill them with salt and put crate logos on them? It's beautiful. Or, or you could even just get the, the store-bought s- cylinder container and slap the sticker on it so that it's that's like... What was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just hand them that. It's just even even better because like, we didn't even try. Here's some salt. You know what, Chris? I, I, I will take personal offense if you don't do that now. Salt shaker's bottom table. Oh, step one's complete. Three hits. Glory. Got him. Got him. Got him. G- give me my 33 points. Uh. <laughs> if you need help making the salt shaker thing happen, I you you have my help, Chris. I'm ready for this. My body is ready. <laughs> Oh, two hits and a crit coming in there. Target oh, lock. Oh, got the target lock. <laughs> He's got the focus. Oh. Burn. Oh, no. And Is that it? That's it. A good game. That's it. Boom. GG. Did get the glory. Got Killed one of them. Got his MOV. All right. Man. That was, that was good. That was good. We didn't quite get to uh, 15 turns, but we got to... Uh, I win. We got to twelve. <laughs> we got to twelve. My my research is is correct. Yeah. It's within the standard deviation. So it is. So, yep. And we've proved once again that if you're running firing arcs and no turrets, you're wrong. So, <laughs> this is this is new X wing. So now let's talk about some options maybe that CRCL could have had. You know, we talked about in the early game that if he would have gotten on the bottom of the map. On, right. on, his, on his right side and just taking up that space and said hey you guys come to me and maybe being able to uh to just wipe one of the scourges off the board early that could have swung the game hard but being being forced to split those ties in the rocks it just it really just hurt his his uh his early game you know it's really hard though like we can say that but slow dive is a good player he knows what he's doing oh, he yeah. was never going to allow crcl to get all those arcs on him. The problem with having TLT like this is, unless you're an exceptionally good TIE Swarm player, if you keep taking that long way around, they'll just eventually, they'll just run away and they'll just pick at you. Like, you can start out in space, but Slow Dive can be like, fine, like, chase me, whatever, you're not gonna catch me, like, or, you know, you'll catch me with your front row, and I'll just lead you in a circle around these rocks, and then I'll just chip away at you slowly. It's it's tough. Like, I am a personal fan of after, but I'm spoiled because I see Dallas all the time of keeping that tie swarm in formation as long as possible. But, you know, it, you know this the game really could have come down to turn zero, just rock placement. I think CRCL maybe should have tried to spread them out more. Yep. Yep. I mean, it it was a great game. I want to yes. thank both these gentlemen for uh, agreeing to be on the stream. You guys are awesome. And yeah, obviously you guys are great players because you guys yeah. are in the deep core. You guys have earned your spots there. And uh, I look forward to covering more of their matches uh, here in the future. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me, man. Dude, thank you for the invite. If I um, find myself not recording on a Friday, I would love to come back on at some point. Oh, absolutely. So this has been episode six of the Intergalactic Theater 5000. Um, we got a, We need an episode title. Um, we need an episode title, Ryan. Give me an episode title. Um, I mean, I'm old wing versus new wing. There you go, old wing versus new wing, episode six. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And you know, actually, before we go, I want to do I want to do a little bit of a of a of a plug here for both the Minox Squadron podcast and myself. Uh both of our podcasts have Patreon pages. You guys have heard us talk about them and uh you know all this all the content, all of our t- our time and the equipment that it takes to do these things, you know, all of it costs money and uh if you if you feel so inclined, if if you feel the pull at your heartstrings, 
go ahead and check it out. Minox, they do, they 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 give out great swag. Um, I'm one of their patrons as well. And you I'll- are. And actually, Dion, uh, we just moved to our new monthly format, and we're giving out um, those our Minox target locks. And yeah. so we're 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 shipping. Um, this weekend, so you can expect next week to have your Minoc locks in the mail. Yeah, I, it'll go straight into my uh, my uh, my playing case, and it'll be on the table for sure next to my Gold Perfect. Squadron target locks. Yes, so oh man, those work. locks are pretty, man. They're yep. pretty. I'm also a Gold Squadron patron. You see, you see how it works. <laughs> 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 this is awesome. But, so yeah, guys, uh, if you feel so inclined, go check out all the all the cool swag we got up there. Uh, I believe it is uh, for you guys. You guys, uh, it's patreon.com slash Minoc Squadron. A uh, Minoc Podcast. Minoc Podcast. There you go. Yep. And for ours, it's uh, patreon.com slash Gold Squadron. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm Dion. I'm Ryan Moisture Farmer. Gold Squadron and Minoc Squadron out. Do I quit Skype now? <laughs> I got I to gotta <laughs> do the intro thing. Oh, wait, no. Uh, I failed. No, no, we're good. They can still hear us. It's fine. Bye, guys. <laughs>